The conference taking place in Kabecha has been a beautiful time for researchers, economists, uh, people from government to have conversations around how does the Eastern Cape safeguard itself against climate change. You'd understand that the agriculture sector, second to the automotive sector, is a huge economic driver of the Eastern Cape and it's important that researchers provide futuristic um, innovations to safeguard the Eastern Cape and also present presentations on how to make sure that the Eastern Cape protects uh, this huge food source for the Eastern Cape. I'm joined this afternoon by Tota Safi Sondombela, the President of the Agricultural Economics Association of South Africa. Obviously, FISO, it was important that you have this um, conference in the Eastern Cape because agriculture is a huge source of food for the Eastern Cape and a huge driver for the Eastern Cape as well. So, uh, important that you have the conversation here at this time for the Eastern Cape. Certainly, and a very good morning to you and good morning to your viewers. Yes, um, it's very important that we had this conference here in the Eastern Cape, particularly that also in this part of the province, um, given the fact of the theme of the conference, which is around looking at the impact of the climate change and how also climate change is affecting the agricultural sector. As you know, in this area where we are, it's one of the best producing wool and mohair in the world. Um, and one of the challenges that we are seeing with those commodities we export into the Asian countries is the changes that it brings in terms of the new pest and the diseases which tend to cause the biosecurity concentration around our products. So one of the expectations in this conference, as you correctly said, my sister, is that it's a conference of agriculture economics, both from government, private sector, academia and the industries. And we brought in also some of our colleagues from the international and the continental um, uh, associations to basically look what are the latest development in the research, but more importantly, how do we translate this research into new strategies of the industries, but also into the policies that will drive the inclusivity and the prosperity of the agricultural sector. And Dr. Sfiso, like you said, you've got internet people from the international sector, so obviously countries that have been able to find strategies to deal with climate change in their countries, and now this afternoon is also about collaborations and conversations to say the researchers, what work have they done to give us innovations and research uh, so that in 10 or 20 years' time we've got enough information to make sure that we're better able to equip ourselves with climate change. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Uh, and not only just also looking at climate change and inspect, only just from the negative point of view because what we know it also brings in opportunities it also start making some of the areas which might not have been conducive for certain crops to start being producing them. let me give you an example of some of the earlier research that we're seeing in south africa we know that wheat has been dominantly been producing the western cape uh, because of the climate that is there we're starting to see some of the areas like my in this province is being one of those areas that can now potentially produce wheat um, because of the change in climate but also as you know most of our state food like the maize, the grain belt, which we often see, which is in the central part of the country, like Northwest Free State and Gauteng. Our climate models and some of our researchers which are bringing in here are saying now that the coastal areas like the Eastern Cape is a new group frontiers. Now, it's not only just on the formal agriculture, what we call commercial agriculture, it's also to then say, with these new opportunities that are coming, how do we start also uh, unlocking some of the opportunities on the tribal land? Because Eastern Cape is one of the areas, given the historical context of our country, where you have independent uh, homelands, like in the former Transkai and former Saskai. How do we bring that land now into the commercial agriculture and ensure that in this new inclusive and prosperous agriculture that we want, we're not only looking at the commercial farmers, but also the subsistence farmers and all the areas, bringing also partnership with the tribal areas. So that's why, over and above the researchers and the economists and all the guys that are here, we also bring in the students, which are the future leaders of our country. But we brought in the existing current um, leaders, um, uh, which we've been very fortunate that, that the MEC of the province is here. Uh, the Deputy Minister of, of, of Agriculture is also amongst with us. So we're hoping that we will not only just be a, 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 a a, a conference where the convergence of the different mindsets, but it's also translating into practical problems of government as well as the policies that we'll need to drive this country. Lance, just speaking about being practical, obviously the best way to be practical is to take it to the people that are affected themselves, which are the farmers. Is there a plan also that once you've packaged this for a while in terms of getting the research in the economic science into then take it to the farmers to make it more understandable to them and also make sure that they are able to safeguard themselves as well? 
Ab absolutely. So the conference is over three days. So today is more of a strategy settings and basically setting up the scenes in terms of what is in the international market. We'll be bringing in some of the professors from the US and some of the professors from Europe to just give us also those lesson learns. Um, in, the, in the second day, it will be more of the, uh, of the academic and changing of the research, both on the adaptation and mitigation strategies. But very key and unique into this conference, we also have a session where industries um, will be coming in and seeing in their specific industries what are the live experiences that they've learned. And then on the last day, we have all the nine heads of agricultural economists in, in, in government, as well as some of the prominent state-owned entities and, and industries, who will then see from what they've learned, how do they see this being incorporated into the day-to-day work, -day work of, their, of their line functions in their respective areas.